Each year, SIUE awards an honorary degree to an individual who has made significant contributions to the cultural, educational, scientific, economic, social, humanitarian, or other worthy fields of endeavor. Today, the university confers a Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, upon Mr. Fernando Aguirre. Mr. Aguirre, will you please join me at the podium? It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you today SIUE alumnus Fernando Aguirre. Mr. Aguirre has been Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Chiquita Brands International since January 2004. Prior to Chiquita, Aguirre spent more than 23 years in brand management, general management, and turnarounds at Procter & Gamble. A native of Mexico, Mr. Aguirre received a baseball scholarship to SIUE. He was a team leader and successful pitcher for the SIUE baseball team in 1979 and 1980. Mr. Aguirre gave the first ever major gift to SIUE athletics in 2003, which jump-started the facility campaign that transformed Roy Lee Field into the regionally recognized Simmons Baseball Complex. Also a supporter of the SIUE School of Business, Mr. Aguirre has served as a featured speaker and advised on proposed curriculum changes, the executive in residence program, and the school's newly constructed Cougar Business Resource Center. Mr. Aguirre earned his Bachelor of Science in Business with a specialty in marketing in 1980. He was elected to the SIUE Athletics Hall of Fame in 2007 and to the Alumni Hall of Fame in 2009. He is currently serving as honorary chairperson for the university's major gifts campaign, Defining Excellence, the campaign for SIUE. You are welcome to read more about Mr. Aguirre's accomplishments on page seven of your commencement program. Fernando Aguirre, in public recognition of merit and distinction, and after careful consideration by the faculty, the president, the board of trustees, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I now confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Aguirre. Dr. Aguirre, it is a special honor to have you as our speaker for this ceremony. Well, that was very, very nice and interesting, and uh, I'm going to go high tech. This is an iPad. If high tech doesn't work, the red E folder is going to come out. Hopefully that, that'll stay right there. All right, now before I start, and I'm very glad that uh, the provost was kind enough for all of us to hear about the chancellor's accomplishments and achievements here. Um, I like to start with a very, very small token of our appreciation. She saved me about 20 minutes of my speech so you guys are going to be 20 minutes closer to your fun. Um, but I would like for all of us to stand up, please. Yes. And the only thing I'm going to say is to the chancellor, thank you. And all of us are going to be giving the best, loudest, greatest standing O for the chancellor.
Thank you very much. I gave my iPad time to warm up and be ready. <laughs> well, thank you, Chancellor uh, Vandegrave, once again for that very kind introduction. I am obviously very honored to have been invited to give this commencement address today as I am a very proud alum of Southern Illinois University, the E, as I learned. So go Cougars. Now, I'm a family man, above anything else, and I'm thrilled to have my best friend and my greatest fan, my wife, Kitlali, right here with me. And also, we have our youngest son and my hero, Fabricio. So you too, please. <laughs> Raise your hand. Now, when we were driving to campus today, I asked them if in their wildest dreams they could imagine this great honor of addressing the SIUE student body. Of course, my wife replied very quickly, you're not in my wildest dreams. <laughs> Brad Pitt is. <laughs> to which, of course, Fabricio added that you are too old for wildest dreams. So I decided not to ask him what his wildest dream was. Now I open with that today because I think laughing often is an important part of life. Laughter, in fact, and having fun are critical for a full life. The world you face today is much different than the one I faced graduating in 1980. There are many new challenges that require us to be more optimistic to succeed. Laughing often is key to having an optimistic attitude. As I was flying on a business trip recently, I was thinking about today. And I asked myself, what would I add most value to your final day as a student at SIUE? From about 35,000 feet, I wrote, my 7,000th tweet. You young people, do you know what a tweet is? <laughs> That's more like it. Which is, of course, the basis for what I want to share with you today. The seven values I respect most in a person. There are many things I learned at Procter & Gamble and at Chiquita, but there are seven personal values that have never failed me and I believe will serve you very well. If you integrate these values into your daily lives, you'll have a better chance to succeed. As individuals, I believe we have complete control over these values. In fact, I believe that you can control your own destiny by living these values. In 1975, nearly 37 years ago, two most memorable things happened in my life. The first, on October 21st, the Cincinnati Reds participated in arguably the best game in baseball history. Unfortunately, in that famous game six, the Reds lost to the Boston Red Sox during extra innings. But the following night, the Reds won game seven in a come from behind 4-3 victory that was a very memorable World Series. And I'm happy to see that none of the Cardinal fans are sitting here tonight. <laughs> now, the other thing that happened was that I boarded a plane in Mexico City on September 6th to embark on the greatest adventure of my life. At 17 years old, I came to the United States to do two things, play baseball and learn English. Some people believe still to this day that I only learned how to do one thing. <laughs> now, it all started at age 12 when I saw my dad communicate in English on a holiday trip in the United States. He ordered us food, took us shopping, and essentially did everything for us. One day, we were having breakfast, and I told my dad that I wanted to order my own. I soon realized that I would go hungry very, very quickly. At that moment, I decided to set one of the most important goals of my life, that one day I was going to be able to speak English like my dad. 
back to September of 75, with about $700 in my pocket, I said goodbye to my family and boarded a flight to Houston, Texas, where I had a five-hour layover for my flight to St. Louis, Missouri. Something happened that day that continues to shape my life. Of the group of exchange students who had boarded the plane in Mexico, I was the oldest at 17 years old. Many kids appeared to be lost. A young 10-year-old who had a connecting flight before mine seemed really out of place. I decided to make sure he was safely aboard his next flight and on to his final destination. I bought him a cheeseburger and a Coke, two most important things I could say then. And from that day on, I discovered that I wanted to help people reach their objective. Today, I hope I can do that for you by sharing these seven values. The first value I believe is critical is loyalty. It is also one, con one I consider to be a core value. Throughout your life, you will be pulled in many different directions by many different people. What I've learned is that you have to decide what relationships are important to you. Chief among them have to be your spouse or your partner, your immediate family, a mentor or a boss, and a handful of friends. For a typical human being, and that would be about most of us here in this room today, you can only have a few true loyal relationships. The philosopher Confucius said, the scholar does not consider gold and jade to be precious, but loyalty and good faith. Being loyal to people is more important than being loyal to material things. Loyal people build trust. The second value is honesty. Honesty goes hand in hand with loyalty, and it also builds trust with others. When you develop a track record of telling the truth, people will want to be loyal to you, and you will gain immense credibility and influence. Every time I have faced tough decisions, I go back to my deep-rooted values, including the core value of honesty. These tough decisions become simpler to make. Honesty makes hard choices clearer, and doing the right thing becomes more evident. It's not only important to be honest with others, but it's also important to be honest with yourself. In your career, you must honestly assess your strengths and weaknesses and what you can realistically accomplish. Being honest with yourself and with others will also build trust. Trust leads to my third favorite value, respect. Each of us must respect people, their views, and their property. I bet your parents have told you to respect your house by not putting your feet on the coffee table. It's not about the coffee table, it's about respecting what others have worked hard to provide. Benito Juarez, a former president of Mexico, said, respect for the rights of others is peace. If you respect your parents' coffee table, there will be peace in that household. More important than respecting property, though, is respecting each individual and their views. This is critical both in your personal life and in your career. The author Stephen Covey not, noted in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that we should seek first to understand, then to be understood. The idea of this habit is to respect what another individual offers before you consider yourself. Remember this line, be respectful and you will be respected. The fourth value is hard work. You already heard that one. There is no replacement for this and you cannot succeed without it. Hard work is not calculated by how many hours you work, but how you set your goals, how you design your plans, and work smartly and persistently to reach those goals. While at SIUE, I learned this value very well. I had a baseball scholarship, but after two years, major changes happened with the leadership of the baseball program. Rumors were flying that scholarships were going to be cut. I would have had to return to Mexico and interrupt my studies. I had an incredibly important objective in front of me. 
finish my college education in the U.S., and most importantly, here at SIUE. To accomplish this, I would have to work harder than ever. I missed all the parties at the Lakefront Apartments. I worked at the Lovejoy Library about 15 to 20 hours a week. I refereed high school soccer games and taught Spanish to two elderly ladies in Basalto, Illinois. I charged $15 an hour. It was a lot of money in those days. Yes, all of that kept me in shape, and also the Spanish lessons kept me a little young. Now, I, I also worked the gates at the soccer games the year SIUE won their national championship. I had to work, I had to study, I had to play baseball, all to stay in the United States and get my degree. I learned very quickly the value of hard work. Everybody gets knocked down once in a while, and hard workers are no exception. Vince Lombardi believed that it's not whether you get knocked down, but it is whether you can get back up. Hard workers always get back up. Part of hard work is striving for excellence. Roberto Goizueta, the late chairman of Coca-Cola, believed that everyone should try to be the best in any profession they choose. He believed that if you're going to be a truck driver or a bricklayer or an executive, be the best at your chosen trade. Remember this line, being average is just as close to the bottom as it is to the top. So why not work hard, a little harder, and be closer to the top? My fifth favorite value is optimism. I have always looked for the positive side on everything I do. Being around positive people makes life more fun and more exciting. Today, I challenge you to erase no from your vocabulary. Erase negativism and say, yes, we can. President Ronald Reagan used to have a small sign on his desk in the Oval Office that said, it can be done. I believe optimism is many times more important than skill or brain power. A few years ago, a friend of mine became quadriplegic after a terrible accident when he was 21. He survived grueling experiences in hospitals, doctors who lacked preparation and rejection from friends. He could only use 5% of his body after the accident. He was told that he would never drive, play any sports, get married, or do the things that quote-unquote normal people do. Talk about hearing some depressing news. During his ordeal one morning, his mother whispered in his ear, while the difficult takes time, the impossible takes a little longer. He decided to embrace his life with optimism. Through strong mental attitude, hard work, and persistence, he became able to utilize about 80% of his body and became a world record holder in wheelchair races, a very successful businessman, and married with two children. If my friend Arberg could achieve these things with all the challenges he faced, so can the rest of us. Another value I consider as core is integrity. Integrity goes beyond honesty and loyalty. It is the manner in which you interact with others throughout your life. It guides every decision you make, and it becomes synonymous with your reputation. In today's fast-paced global career environment, you will face many ethical dilemmas in both the workplace and also in your personal life. The path to success cannot be built by cutting corners. Failing to live with integrity leads to disastrous results. People who try to project a false image of themselves and their lives inevitably get uncovered. This is the reason executives Athletes and politicians often resign in disgrace due to their previously hidden actions. You should have no reason to fear defeat if you are living with integrity. A friend, a friend once told me success is not what you achieve, but who you are along the way. People will remember how you achieve success far more than what you achieve. My final and favorite value is commitment. Commitment to your family, to your career, 
to your religion, to your values, and ultimately to yourself. At PNG, commitment was key to success. Being committed to whatever you do inspires faith in your work and in your ability. While at PNG, my single-minded focus was on the work at hand. I learned early on that I always needed to set an objective and define a plan to achieve that objective. PNG kept promoting me and giving me increasing responsibility. My goal was to be the first Mexican-born executive to reach the vice president level. At PNG, it takes 15 to 20 years to become a VP, and only very few make it. I made it in 13 years, and to this day, I am the only Mexican-born executive who broke the diversity glass ceiling, and the only one who reached beyond to the president level. After reaching, thank you for that. After reaching my professional objective of being the first Mexican-born executive to lead all of PNG's operations in Mexico, I adjusted my objectives and decided to pursue an opportunity to work and compete with other executives in the United States. The rest, as they say, is history. Becoming a CEO of a Fortune 1000 company has been an interesting road and certainly the most challenging of my professional objectives. But it has taken commitment to follow every single one of these values to help me get where I am today. That's why commitment is my favorite value, because without it, you cannot make all the other values work for you. Incidentally, one of the most important commitments you can make is to continue your learning experience. Learning is an everlasting habit. In fact, as much as I respect this wonderful institution, I got some bad news for you. SIU and its wonderful faculty has simply taught you the learning process. It is now up to you to continue to learn more in order to play the game of life. I encourage you to continue to learn about leadership, and what it takes to succeed. Read about business and government leaders who have been successful. Read inspirational stories in the field that interests you. These stories will continue to motivate you throughout your career. Today I close with one of these stories. There was a man in the 1800s that at a young age had to work to support his family after they were forced out of their home. His mother died early in his life. He failed in business. He was defeated when he ran for state legislature. He then lost his job and couldn't get into law school, and then declared bankruptcy. He spent the next 17 years of his life paying off the money he borrowed from friends and family. If that wasn't enough, he was engaged to be married, but then his fiance died. He had a nervous breakdown and spent the next six months in bed. He then ran for Congress and U.S. Senate, but again was defeated. But in the year 1860, the one important thing that did happen because of his commitment, and it, it is that this man, Abraham Lincoln, was elected president of the United States and became one of the greatest leaders in American history. If you decide to live with loyalty, honesty, respect, hard work, optimism, integrity, and commitment, I guarantee that you'll have a much better chance to have a good life. And a great byproduct of these values is that you will have fun in the process. A person asked a successful reporter how she had achieved success. She said, I can answer with two words, good decision. The person then said, but how do you get to make good decisions, and she said, oh, that's very simple, experience. Finally, the person, somewhat frustrated, said, and how do you gain experience? And she said, oh, that's easy too, bad decision. <laughs> Congratulations on graduating and taking a great step towards your success today. Hopefully, you'll gain experience faster without too many bad decisions. Thank you very much.
Congratulations on your degree, Mr. Aguirre, and thank you for sharing your values with us. I think probably the best decision we made long ago was to bring him here to SIUE.